Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Arcu Corner. Actually, this is an updated episode that talks about ramps. More specifically, we're going to be talking about how the 2010 ADA standards applies to ramps. As of today, April 2022, the 2010 ADA standards are still the updated standards for ADA. So if you want to know about slopes, cross slopes, when a ramp needs handrails, and things like that, this is the video that you want to watch. So don't go anywhere. You're about to find out. Hello there, my name is Josue Diaz. I am a licensed architect in the state of California, and I've been dealing with ADA since I started working in the industry for over 20 years now. So you want to know about ramps? Let's get started. Let's start with the basics. You may already know what a ramp is, but what are the technicalities that make a sloped floor a ramp per ADA? Well, it is all about the steepness of the slope. A walking surface is defined by ADA section 403.3 as a walkway having a slope that is not steeper than 1 in 20 or 5% slope. So if your path of travel has a walkway that is within those parameters, guess what? You do not have a ramp. Technically, it's just a walkway. If your path of travel, however, has a walkway with a slope that is more than 1 in 20 or 5% and up to 1 in 12 or 8.33%, then guess what? Per ADA section 405.2, you have a ramp. Now, just to clarify this a bit, some people have asked, what does 1 in 12 mean or what does 1 in 20 mean? It is simple. Using a 1 in 12 as an example, it means that for every inch or millimeter you go up, you must at least go 12 inches or millimeters over. Applying the same reasoning to 1 in 20, it means that for every 1 inch or millimeter you go up, you must at least go 20 inches or millimeters over. What happens if you have a path of travel that is steeper than 1 in 12? Well, simply put, that does not meet ADA requirements and it will not be allowed as part of an accessible path of travel. ADA section 405.2 allows for some limited exceptions, but they are so rare that we won't discuss it today. Speaking of slopes, what about a cross slope? That is also important. Per ADA section 405.3, the cross slope cannot be steeper than 1 in 48 or 2%. Since we are in this cross-section view, per ADA section 405.5, the width of a ramp must be 36 inches minimum. Now that takes care of the slopes and widths, but how about the length? Can you make a ramp that is 100 feet long? Well, ADA section 405.6 states that a ramp can only have a rise of 30 inches maximum. So how does that affect our length? Well, Given that the maximum allowable slope for a ramp is 1 inch vertical for every 12 inch horizontal, this tells you that you can only go 30 feet horizontally maximum if you use that 1 in 12 slope. So the answer is no. You cannot make one continuous ramp that has a 1 in 12 slope 50 feet long or 100 feet long. So what happens if you need to ramp up a height that is more than 30 inches in total height? Well, that is when intermediate landings come in play. So let's talk about landings. For this, let's also look at a plan view of this ramp. Whether your ramp is 5 feet or 10 feet long, per ADA section 405.7, ADA requires ramps to have landings at the top and bottom of each ramp. Per ADA section 405.7.1, the slope of landings shall not be steeper than 1 in 48 or 2% in any direction. Per ADA section 405.7.3, landings must be 60 inches in length. Per ADA section 405.7.2, landing widths must be as wide as the ramp itself. So, to connect this information with the questions we posed earlier, if we need more than 30 inches in rise, we simply have to break our ramp into multiple sections so that each section rises 30 inches or less, and every landing in between would be what we call an intermediate landing, which would have the same requirements as a top and bottom landing. In other words, you would need 60 inches in length between ramps as a landing. But having a ramp that is straight may not always work due to space limitations, and so what is often needed is for ramps to change direction, such as the example that is drawn here. Earlier, 
We said that landings need to be as wide as a ramp, and that also applies to intermediate landings. However, if the ramp turns like we see here, per ADA section 405.7.4, the landing must be 60 inches by 60 inches minimum. What about handrails? Sometimes you see ramps that have them, and sometimes they don't. Why is that? Well, per ADA section 405.8, if your ramp has a rise greater than 6 inches, you must have handrails. That's why you see some short ramps that do not go up greater than 6 inches that don't have handrails, such as curve ramps. Now, what about edge protection? Per ADA section 405.9, edge protection must be provided on each side of the ramp and at each side of ramp landings. There are two options on how to provide edge protection. Option 1, per ADA section 405.9.1, the floor surface of the ramp or landing must extend 12 inches minimum beyond the inside face of the handrail. Option 2, per ADA section 405.9.2, the edge protection can be a wall or barrier that does not allow a 4 inch diameter sphere to pass through within 4 inches of the floor. Now, it may seem obvious that if you use a curb as a barrier, it will not let a sphere through. What is not so clear is that a curb also needs to be a certain height. In most instances, this curb is not less than 4 inches. Now, guardrails. Guardrails are not required by ADA. But just FYI, the International Building Code requires guardrails and ramps in certain instances. Per IBC Section 1015.1, guardrails are needed when ramps or landings are located more than 30 inches above floor or grade within 36 inches horizontal to the edge of the open side. And one thing I would like to point out briefly is that a guardrail and a handrail are not the same thing. And normally, because guardrails are required to be 42 inches in height minimum, and handrails are only allowed to be at 38 inches in height maximum, you normally have to have two separate items like this. In other words, your handrail cannot be your guardrail, and your guardrail cannot be your handrail. And that is it. It's not so complicated, right? I hope you liked this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. These types of videos are made possible by the help and support that I get from my patrons through my Patreon account. If you would like to be one of my supporters, I will leave the description to my Patreon account in the description box below. If you can support me through Patreon, I would greatly appreciate it. In the meantime, if you would like to help me in other ways, you can simply share this video with other people that you think may appreciate and like the content of the channel. It is my hope that subjects such as these ones that deal with codes and ADA and things like that could help others in the industry. Once again, I hope you liked it. But for now, this is Archie Corner, signing out.